the No Fate channel, checking in. On this episode of Dad's Old House, I'm gonna go over this brand new Trex traditional decking and all its glorious details. What I had done, what I paid for it, how the price went up a little bit, what you can do to try to save some money on your deck build that's going on, and then finally talk about why I actually even had it done. <gasps> So if this is your first time to the channel, please give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. On this Dad's Old House series, I typically go through the upgrades, the fixes, and all the issues that happen to come along with owning an older house. This house was built in 19, early 1980s, and we've owned this house, we've lived here for 11 years. So as you can imagine, everything under the sun has started to reach its end of life, and this deck is no different. And when I was looking to get estimates and quotes on this deck, I wasn't able to find an accurate price or even a range of price on what decking should cost to replace your existing deck. And that's why I'm making today's video. Before we even dive into it, I want you to give me an estimate on what you think this deck replacement cost me. And I'm gonna go through at the end of this video, the full cost breakdown on what it cost, what the increased charges were and ways that I was able to save some money. So a little bit of history with regards to the original deck here. Um, the original deck was about 20 to 25 years old. And when they built the deck, uh, I don't necessarily know if they originally built it to code. They certainly didn't use the correct type of planks that they should have. And they didn't finish the planks with stain in order to protect them from the New England weather. Also what they did at the time, it was in fashion. They actually put seating all around the railings. So if you are hosting a very large party, it would have made absolute sense to have some really great seating along the railings, but it also took up a ton of surface area on this deck, um, if, especially if you were only out here with a few people. When we moved into this uh, home 11 years ago, the deck surface itself was not doing great. It was okay, and we, we sanded it down, we cleaned it up, we washed it off, and then we restained it thoroughly. In fact, we actually restained it with two different coats, um, and it just wouldn't handle the New England weather. The wood that they used and the type of original conditioning that they did on the wood just wasn't accurate or, or, or good enough for this New England weather. And it showed there was a lot of, especially in the later years, a number of um, rotted boards that needed to be replaced. And I did my best to replace them, but it was obviously a losing battle. And because we knew we were kind of fed up and done with staining and painting, we knew we wanted to go with Trex um, non-wood surfacing in order to have it last as long or as close to a lifetime as possible. And obviously, if you've done any type of price comparisons, you know that stuff isn't cheap. It's great stuff. It lasts forever or as close as you're going to get to forever, but it's not cheap. So one of the ways that we went about actually saving money on replacing this deck was to use, or I should say reuse, the existing substructure, which was absolutely in great working condition. Underneath the base, the foundation of this deck, because obviously it doesn't get nearly as much wear and tear from the weather from Mother Nature as the top was, was in great condition for the most part. And we'll get into a bit of detail on that in a second. But in order to save a ton of money on lumber and in just cost itself with the crew that had to do the work, we only did the surface of this deck, which means we had the whole surface, all the railings, all the seatings, even the steps ripped out and replaced with treks, but we didn't have to do anything with the base and that would have driven the cost way, way, way up. So this should give you a proper idea of what was done. You can see that the existing substructure, the base and the legs these are the stair portion, was reused, but Trex was used for the surface. Now there are a number of different types, shapes, and colors of Trex. And at the time that I am shooting this video, many of you might be aware that there is an absolute shortage on building materials, not only in the materials and the color and the options, and of course that is leading to crazy, crazy prices. Now if you look at Trex, you will see that they come in a number of different colors and designs and textures and stuff like that. Everything ends up being an increase in price, and frankly, in 2021, that price just keeps going up by the day. We ended up going with a Trex Select Saddle. Not only was it a color that they had in stock, but it was one of the lower cost um, 
Trex options that they had. And frankly, we knew that anything that we got was going to be an absolute upgrade of like a hundred fold compared to what we had. So we weren't too picky with regards to um, having the super premium tracks that was going to run a substantially large amount more. And I don't think people are going to notice the difference that come out here and share this deck with us. As far as what we actually paid and contracted the builders to do, we set up the original contract to remove the rails, the deck, and the steps. We also um, asked them to remove all the debris, as you can imagine, and then paid them as well to add in the posts, which hopefully you can see here, posts like this, but there's also obviously a support beam on the inside of wood. And we also paid them to add the Trex Select planking that you see here. And hopefully you can see that there's no screws in the actual planking. They're held down um, with these middle screws, which is nice because again, it creates a nice level, even comfortable surface. And then obviously we had them, paid them to add the deluxe white railing. Now I don't know the difference between a deluxe white, a deluxe white railing and a regular white railing, but that's what they did. And I happen to think they did a fantastic job. And the contract was for $8,535. So that $8,535 was the original contract. And anytime you are doing rework on an existing structure, you tend to run into upcharges because they happen to find more things as they go along. And ours was no different. One of the things that they found or they discussed, I should say, we kind of knew before they even started, and that is the siding. They could have left the existing siding um, here, you can see this color. They could have left this as is, and we just didn't want that look. So for $250, we were able to just pay to have this kind of come in, clean up this side surface and match these railings. And we thought for the life of the deck, it was gonna be nice to have that, uh, that pay, pay that one-time price and enjoy it. One of the issues that we knew about going in, but then it actually got worse once they actually removed that old surface, was the dip. There was significant sag on the back end of the deck that you're looking at over here. And so from the from the front of the deck where the, meets the house to the back of the deck, there was some sag and they thought they were going to be able to correct for that fairly easily. And then obviously once they actually removed the um, planks, that, that deck sag was a lot more significant than they had realized. Uh, almost a whole full inch um, from the high to the low. And that caused a lot of significant work to try to basically pull up or, you know, push up underneath the deck with like a winch, re get it resupported, and then try to level it off as best you can so that there was no sag and that the deck was nice and even. Even with all their additional work and the additional wood that they put in here to kind of, hook, to kind of support the end of this deck, there's still a little bit of sag and it's just something you can't deal with, you can't fix, but they did a really good job trying to bring it in uh, as close as possible. And if I didn't mention it, you probably, if you were on this deck, wouldn't even know it is here. Obviously, if you have new construction, if you have like no deck whatsoever and they're putting a brand new one in, then that's not something that you should um, consider yourself or have an issue with. Oftentimes when it's new construction, there's a lot less issues because everything that they put down is gonna be you know 90 degrees on center and everything's gonna be perfect from, from Jump Street. Overall, everything that could have gone right went right. The, the guys showed up on time, they busted their butt, they did a great job, and it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm telling you, in the amount of space that we saved from removing the seating around the edge of the railing is crazy. It is crazy. It looks like the deck size has doubled. It feels like, uh, like twice the size of my old deck, just in terms of usable space, and we love it. We're really happy that we, we got the tracks. We're really happy with what we paid, even though it is, of course, a lot of money, but we did feel like we saved where we could utilizing and reusing the existing base. And honestly, we just wish we had done it sooner. Like most things in life, you know, you save, you try to put stuff off to make sure that you've got the money, um, that, you know, you're not really kind of just throwing money out the window. And we're glad that it's done now. We wish we had done it sooner, not messed around with trying to fix and repaint and, and, and reseal a lot of the rotted stuff that was going on previously with the deck surface. Obviously it is New England, so you get a lot of snow, a lot of, a lot of sun, a lot of snow, especially over here, um, and you're gonna get some freezing temperatures. Now, one thing to note when it comes to a Trex deck in general, it's gonna be a lot more slippery than your existing wooden deck because the material is not as porous as your wooden deck would be. And we've already seen that when it rains, it pulls up a lot more 
on the deck because the space between the railings uh, decking is a lot narrower and there's obviously no you know pitted rotted wood to absorb that water but uh, overall just something to note when it rains or when it freezes or when it snows you got to be careful when you come out here on that trex deck but overall super happy if you got any questions i hope i answered as much as i could i'll put as many links as i can in the description of today's video but if you got any questions drop it below and let me know how close you were to the actual cost of what i said i finally paid which came out to $9,035 total with those two extra upcharges that we, you know, were fairly, the, the, the contractor was 100% upfront and honest about it. it, wasn't one of those gotcha issues. So it wasn't an issue that we had, um, just one of those things when you start pulling off old construction, you find stuff that has to be fixed. Um, as usual, if you came this far in the video, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't say anything for the trip back. This channel is dedicated to my life as a father of two wonderful children, and it centers around health, fitness, and all of the tricks and tribulations that I go through to try to be a great parent to my children and still accomplish my own personal goals.